Hello, my name's Gary Clardy, and this is the next part of Beard Resonator Guitar Kit Construction. We, I've said all along, I've made some modifications to the kit, and today I'm going to give you a tour of a close-up of what the guitar looks like at this point. I'm getting close to ready to finish and uh, then I'm going to take this headstock and darken it up some. This is East Indian Rosewood and this is some type of ebony and I'm going to dark this up to match it. So let me start by giving you a tour and uh, I'm going to move this camera slowly so maybe it will pull focus. This is the headstock, and we move on down to the fretboard and the frets. And if, if you recall, this fretboard has um, binding on it that is maple. We're going to move on down. You can see the dots we installed all the way to the end where those are covered up, the screws are covered up. And then we're going around this, the binding, you can see it fits pretty good. I've got one little place that's not fitting real good right there, but it's in tight. Come on around the guitar. Lighting looks kind of bad there, but uh, it's showing up okay, I think. And we'll come on around. We're getting back towards the neck here. And then we're going to look on the inside and see those sound posts. Lighting's kind of poor in there. Now, let's look at the back. See the back of the headstock, little chip out right there, but that'll cover. Come on down the neck into right there where the neck joint is. And that's actually a pretty good looking joint. Then we're going to go on around and look at the binding that's installed and the guitar looks pretty clean actually. Then we kind of look quick look at the sides of it. Okay, so we're going to stain this uh, headstock to more, be more of a match for the fretboard. And the thing that I want to do is tape this off so that the stain won't bleed into the surrounding wood. What I'm going to do is get on here And there's usually a little bleed over in spite of everything you do. But, and I guess you might, could have the question, why didn't you use the ebony that, that came with this piece? And I could have, except the guy who cuts my logo was laser. That's a little trouble burning the ebony because it has so much oil in it. It wants to, well, it actually wants to burn instead of cut. So, uh, it's just tough. We've tried it a couple times and it doesn't work on 
his laser. I'm sure there's some other lasers that probably work. Now, I want to get that taped off so that no stain gets down into the sides of that. The next thing I want to do is I have some sanding sealer here that is used with nitrocellulose lacquer. I'm going to paint these letters with it. Just put a thin little coat to keep the black stain out of that, out of that wood grain. My buddy Greg Blaylock is stopping by here in a little bit. He's the one that got me interested in building this. He is such a fantastic resonator player. Okay, you can see how that brought that out and that's sealed so we can uh, now hit it with the black stain. We'll see how that goes. I've got some, I think it's five beans. Five beans, F-I-E-B-I-N-G-S. I guess that's the uh, southern pronunciation of it. But it's oil dye professional. I believe this came from either Luthier's Mercantile or uh, or either uh, Do Mac. Probably put some makeup on a person if they needed it. So now I have the stain on this and I'm going to let it set up for a while and dry out and then I'll clean it up and I think it'll be ready to go but you can see there's not a lot of contrast now between the headstock and the uh, fretboard so that's what I was trying to achieve and once I get this cleaned up and sanded a little bit it should even be closer. Come on in bud. Come over here I'm working on this thing for you. I just told them earlier on film here that can't wait to get it strung up and you can play it for Me it. neither. It looks good. This is my friend Greg Blaylock. He and I are kind of on a task to build these together and Greg's a professional uh, resonator player. Greg, what about your uh, background? Where you come from? Uh, I come from Dixon. Uh, my granddaddy played with Flat and Scruggs in the 60s. So I got, that's how I got my start when I was about eight or nine years old. Learning old Flat and Scruggs stuff. What was your granddaddy's name? Billy Powers. Billy Powers. Yep. So I guess he used to take you, move on over here a little bit so I'm not sure we got you on the camera. I guess he used to take you around to all of these fiddle conventions and bluegrass and uh, kind of trained you in the banjo and the uh, resonator. Yeah, from about age 8 till 17. And you've played with some uh, pretty impressive people. Who are some people you've played with? Uh, Josh Williams and uh, Cody Kilby, Tina Adair, a bunch of people like that. Mickey Harris, he plays with Rhonda Vincent. So, and that's mainly bluegrass. It's kind. bluegrass, yeah. You've played with some people like Michael Martin Murphy and Tony Rice. I played a. Uh, I played with Josh Williams, and that's how I got the opportunity to play with uh, Michael Martin Murphy in Owensboro, Kentucky, at a show. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Uh, you've kind of watched the construction of this. You've seen my videos as I've gone through this, and you've kind of advised me and told me what you thought. What are you thinking so far on the 
on the guitar here, on the resonator, the Clarity resonator. I love the peg head. Uh, the peg head looks great. With the, you know, with the wood instead of pearl. Everybody uses pearl, and I, I think that looks more natural. It looks real good, and all the maple binding you put on over the whole instrument looks great to me. It's good and clean. You can't wait to see what it sounds like. Yeah, I'm dying to hear the sound of it, and uh, this. Uh, you know, that's the Tennessee iris on that headstock there, and uh, I thought that it was a good logo. That's what I've used on 50 guitars that I've built. And uh, it is organic looking, so I'm, I'm glad you're pleased with that. Now, this is just kind of a, um, you know, demo model to get our feet wet in the construction of these. And we've got a lot of testing to do and those kinds of things. But uh, the next one will be one for you that we're going to build. It's going to be with rosewood. Yeah. Uh, body. The body is going to be bigger. Yes. Uh, it'll have a shear horn cone in it, hand turned by Tim Shearhorn. Uh, it'll have rosewood fretboard, rosewood headstock. And the top will be Sitka spruce okay. or Adirondack, okay. one, or, one or the other. And it'll be built very similar to this with a sound post, except if there's any modifications that we find by doing this, okay. even the baffle, we will go from that, to go on that. So we're looking forward to, to getting into building these things, and we'll see how we, how we come out. I'm looking forward to it. Well, thank you for stopping by today. And we may have some of these for sale here one of these days, man. Pretty soon, hopefully. When we uh, get this completed, I want you to sit down with me and play us a little bit on it, and we'll just right. let the people see how it sounds. Okay. Looking forward to it. Okay, that completes the staining of the headstock to make it match the uh, fretboard and uh, it was nice to have Greg Blaylock stop by for a few minutes and uh, the next part uh, of this series we will be moving on to taping off the binding and uh, staining the body and doing the sunburst so, thank you for joining me in this part, which is the veneer, the headstock veneer staining. And uh, look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Thank you.